In this video, I'm going to show you how you can uh, cluster cells now with uh, unsupervised uh, clustering uh, within Cytomap. So now all the data is loaded into Cytomap, we can uh, start the clustering if you hit cluster cells. Then you have a window that pops up with different uh, possibilities. So um, first of all, you need to define uh, which measurements you're going to use. So here we're going to use the average intensity in the nucleus for FUXP3 and the average intensity in the membrane for CD4 and CD8. And then you have so the normalization. So here you can normalize over the entire data set or per sample. So here I only have one sample, so that doesn't change. But if you were to have several samples, definitely normalizing per sample is a better option. And I would very much um, encourage you to use the standardized, which is you subtract the mean, you divide by standard deviation um, for your normalization. Then uh, you have uh, the number of region, number of clusters. So by default, it's Davis Boulding. We're going to try with Davis Boulding. So Davis Boulding score is actually um, the um, ratio between um, the uh, intra uh, cluster uh, difference and the inter cluster differences. So you want to minimize this, you want to have uh, very small differences within a cluster and very large differences between clusters. So uh, how it works is it's that it's going to uh, do the clustering for um, many different values of clusters, many different number of clusters, and then it's going to select uh, the clustering with the lowest davis boulding score. So obviously here we use individual cells because we want to cluster uh, cells, uh, individual cells, so every single cell. And then you can uh, select um, the clustering algorithm. So here we're going to use the, the the neural network self-organizing map, it's a, it's a pretty nice clustering method. It's actually trying to um, find um, so neur neurons that, uh, that are able to go through the entire domain of all the expression of your different cells. And then uh, it's going to affect uh, the, the cells to the closest neuron. Generally, it's pretty powerful, so I'm going to say OK. When you do that, then you, you need to define a, uh, a model name. So I'm going to, uh, for example, it's, it's nice to uh, do something that is related to your parameterization. So I'm using a Davis Boulding score with a sum clustering. So I'm going to define it that way. And now it's um, first. So applying uh, the sum with different number of clusters, so it's determining the number of clusters, and then it will give the results for uh, the number of clusters that gives the, um, the lowest uh, Davis building score. So uh, I'm just going to uh, speed up the video so you don't have to wait for the entire processing time, even though it's not that long. All right, so it's done. It took a few minutes. It takes a, a bit of time uh, still. Uh, as you can see here, uh, we only have two classes. And uh, that's not what we expect. So uh, if I go on the other figure, um, so this, uh, this is the Davis Boulding uh, score. And as you can see, when we only have two clusters, it's smaller than with with more and so that's why two clusters uh, was only two clusters uh, were, were selected it also takes time because you see you go from uh, 2 to uh, 24 or 2024 uh, what you can also see is that um, even though it looks large uh, the values goes from 0 0.98 to 1 .80 and 18 so it doesn't change much actually and so probably that here, the Davis building score is very much similar whatever number of, of, of clusters is. So that's not super uh, satisfying here. If I go back to my clustering, so if I, I can uh, put it uh, in the same, uh, so flip, flip it so I can um, maybe see it better. What what it looks like is that you know mainly it's identifying um, cells where we have lots of um, lots of um, the different of um, 
of, of uh, you know the the immune cells and and probably um, here it corresponds to mainly uh, the, the tumor um, border so you can see what what it corresponds to but we'll do it with uh, the next clustering because here we know that we definitely uh, expect more than two clusters uh, actually we accept we expect four clusters because ideally we would have FOXP3 positives for the T-Rex, CD4 positive for the T-helper cells, CD8 positive for the T-cytotoxic cells, and negative cells. So I'm going to close this. And here, instead of doing the Davis building, I'm going to uh, do a manual choice and say that I want four clusters. And I'm going to run it again. So it's going to be much faster because now uh, I only run it once instead of 23 times, so sum for four clusters. So it's training the new model, and it's down. And this is what I get, so I, I see that uh, now I have four different clusters. So here, even if I invert the y-axis, it's a bit hard to know which cells are which and so if I want to have a better idea so I can close everything I can actually redo the figures I, I showed you now if I just want to do it again in in here I now have the DB sum so first clustering and the sum four clusters so I can uh, go back to this clustering uh, so there's a very useful tool which is uh, region statistics so when you do that you have a window that pops up and you can select uh, for um, which clustering you want. So I'm going to use the sum four clusters and which information you want to look at. So I don't need the coordinates. Just want to look at the different clusters based on FOXP3, CD4, and CD8. I need to select this. And now if I do OK, it's um, defining many different versions. Oh, yeah. So I. Uh, so let me do it again because actually, so you, if you want, you can look at all those different windows, but what is really useful is the full change. So I'm going to unselect everything else and just run it for the full change. And that gives you this very uh, useful video. So I shouldn't have selected all. Let me just close this, remove this, and now we have this and it's uh, fairly easy to see what we have so we have a heat map with a full change so uh, when we have over expression in red and the expression in blue and we can see that for the group four we have over expression of foxp3 so it means that we have the foxp3 positive cells the group three corresponds to uh, over expression of cd4 so it's the cd4 positive cells and finally the group 2 is uh, over expression of CD8 so CD8 positive cells and finally the group 1 where it's under expressed for all of these three markers corresponding to the negative cells you also have a percentage so it means that we have about 58 percent 57 percent of negative cells 19 percent of CD8 positive 15 percent of CD4 positive and 9 percent of FOXP3 positive so here we can identify different groups and it makes sense here we have uh, the groups we were expecting uh, for which are the so FOXP3 again here corresponding to the T-Rex then CD4 here corresponding to the T helper cells, CD8 to the T cytotoxic cells, and the other cells. Uh, you can also uh, do some. And so now that the clustering is done, we can uh, export uh, the clustering to import it back into QPath. So here I'm going to uh, go as uh, export full data tables as CSV. And we need to uh, export X and Y because uh, that's how we're going to identify the cells in QPath. We're going to need the image so it can match with the image information. We don't need this information because uh, what we're interested in is a clustering. So we don't need the first clustering, only the second one. And so here we want it for um, individual cells. 
And here I need to select all, all the cells. And um, I don't want to have an individual CSV file for each cell, otherwise it's going to be way too long. And I can, uh, here, I'm just going to make sure that's the right thing, even though I think as it's checked here, it should be the right one, and I can export it. So the way it works is that you just need to define the folder. Okay, so here it's in my QPass project. I'm going to create a new folder. I, I'm going to uh, define it as sitemap export measurements. So I know that it, it's in there. And so I do that because if I were to have several files, if you put everything in there, then you can use the script or, uh, that, I, that we downloaded earlier. Uh, to import all the information back to QPath. So I select the folder and now if I go back to my project, if I go inside a map, I have the information that is required in the folder I just created.